You know, the, the prostate gland, of course, is a, a, a very important part of the male anatomy. It uh, produces part of the semen and it is uh, responsive to male hormones as far as its growth and including, including its excessive growth into prosthetic hyperplasia and into prostate cancer. So uh, the general state of your body health is often reflected in whether or not you break down with certain diseases, particularly prostate cancer. A prostate cancer is analogous to breast cancer in women. Uh, both are, are, are sexually related organs. Uh, both of them respond to, to hormones produced in the body. Uh, both of them are caused by the rich Western diet. And both of them fail when it comes to standard treatments. So if you can relate to breast cancer more than prostate cancer, you should think about, about the analogy there when I talk about prostate. Uh, prostate cancer <clears throat> is uh, quite common. As a matter of fact, uh, based upon microscopic examination, about 40 to 50% of men by the time they reach age 50, uh, if you look at their prostate under the microscope, you'll see cancer cells. And each decade it increases to the point where you get to people in their 70s and 80s, men. And if you biopsy their prostate glands, just randomly, you, you have no idea these people are ill. Somewhere between 90 and 100% of the biopsy specimens will turn out to show cancer. The fortunate thing is that most of the time these cancer cells are never troublesome. They stay in the prostate or they don't grow fast enough to shorten a person's life. Only a small number of people do you have uh, aggressive cancer cells. Now, I believe the difference between having non-aggressive cancer cells and other ones that are, that are isolated to the prostate, and you can see under the microscope versus those who spread throughout the body, the brain, the bones, the liver, et cetera, the ones that kill the metastases, they become aggressive as a result of eating the rich Western diet. I say that because if you look at people who eat a healthier diet, who have low rates of prostate cancer worldwide, you'll find these microscopic changes in their prostate gland too, but they just don't manifest as life-threatening diseases. Now, as far as early detection of prostate cancer goes, the, the only test that I had when I was a young student was uh, the finger you'd reach inside a man's rectum and you'd feel his prostate gland. And if, if you felt a tumor that was say the size of a marble, it was hard, then you were concerned that the person might have prostate cancer, but you did a little else to them except to take their prostate gland out by surgery. And uh, nothing happened as far as the positive outcome goes. A lot of side effects from the surgery, no prolonged litigation in life. So there, as time went on, we found ways to develop or to diagnose prostate cancer more often. And uh, even though it's inaccurate, more commonly. And that's with a, a PSA test. The PSA test uh, is for something called prosthetic specific antigen. That means you find a protein in the blood that came from the prostate gland. The prostate gland has to be doubling as far as tumors are concerned. It has to be doubling for 10 years. It has to be the size of a marble. It has to be one centimeter in size before it's able to produce enough elevation and PSA level to be considered abnormal. So you've got a tumor growing for 10 years on average before the PSA test became, becomes even normal. Now for, or even abnormal, but you know, for men, we have a different standard as far as aggressiveness of treatment compared to women. That may be, in fact, I'm certain it is because of the male dominated medical business. We give men a better shake than we do with women when it comes to, uh, to the treatment of the diseases. So whereas uh, with women, if you are diagnosed with breast cancer, you know, it's automatically off to the surgeons, the radiotherapists, the chemotherapists. It's not that way with men. With men, in fact, even by law, you're offered options. You are offered the option of watchful waiting which means you don't do anything. Why? Because the survival time is the same, if not better, for those people who do nothing, as opposed to those people who take aggressive approaches like radiation or surgery. So to prevent a prostate cancer, you want to eat a healthy diet to slow cancer down. You want to eat a healthy diet. In fact, Dean Arnish has shown in his studies that 
a change to a diet like we recommend uh, will actually reduce tumor size, slow the rate of prostate growth, and that should be translated into a longer, healthier, happier life. And uh, if you are, if you do decide that you're going to get into the early detection game, and you decide to have a test such as a PSA test, rectal examinations are not all that popular, be it for the patient or the doctor. If you decide you're going to have a PSA test, be forewarned that they're very likely to be positive. Just randomly picking the population of men, you just walk out on the street and you pick men off the street, 10% of them will be positive in their PSA test. And you take that 10% positive, you take them back to the laboratory and you examine their prostate under a microscope, half of them will have prostate cancer. So it's almost a foregone con con conclusion that if you're gonna be tested, you're going to be diagnosed, you're gonna be declared sick. And that's why I recommend that you don't get involved in the early detection businesses, not only for, for prostate, but also for breast diseases. We end up doing more harm than good for patients. Now, as far as uh, prostate enlargement goes, that's probably due to overstimulation of the prostate gland by hormones that uh, react secondary to the Western diet. And that's a very common condition for men to have as they get older. As far as uh, simple treatments for prostate enlargement, there are certain herbs like saw palmetto. There are certain drugs uh, doctors prescribe such as Flomax. And there are various surgical procedures, some that are called minimal and some that are quite aggressive and debilitating. So you wanna be very careful when you're looking for ways to treat prostate enlargement, prostatic hyperplasia we call it, or prostatism we call it. Different disease than prostate cancer. But those are the two afflictions that men have in their prostate gland, secondary to the Western diet. Thank you for listening. I'm Dr. John McDougall.